Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. I'm glad you joined us today. We're beginning a brand new series on how to interpret the Bible. If ever there was a time that we needed to understand God's Word to us, it is today. So I'm glad you're with us. By the way, we're offering some Bible studies as well. If you'd like to get into more in-depth Bible study, hopebiblestudy.org is where you can go. We want to be people who listen to the Word of God and live the Word of God. Today, our topic, the uniqueness of the Bible. So welcome to Hope Sabbath School. Welcome to the team. This is going to be a great series. Yes. Now, I know you believe in the Bible and you believe in the God of the Bible or you wouldn't be here. But I'm praying that we would learn more about the Word of God for our lives today as a result mm -hmm. of this study. We're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family, more than 220 countries around the world. I don't know how many that is in terms of people, but you're important to us, and thanks for writing. Elizabeth writes from Palm Beach in Florida and says, Hello, Hope Sabbath School. Hello. Hello. I watch every day on Direct TV. I love it. I learn so much that helps me in my spiritual walk. I'm a member of the Baptist denomination, and I love your studies, as I'm sure many others do as well. The Word of God is good for all to hear and understand. Amen? Amen. Amen. I pray God's continued blessings on you as you continue to be committed to carry out the Great Commission. Well, Elizabeth, we're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Thanks for writing to us from Palm Beach there in Florida. Mm. Here's a note from Jacqueline in the islands of Turks and Caicos. Is that right? Did I say that right? Caicos. 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 Yeah. Caicos. Thank you. Turks and Caicos. I would get 100 emails otherwise. <laughs> I live in the Turks and Caicos Islands. I look forward to Hope Sabbath School each week because I'm a teacher in the children's department at my church. I don't always get to participate in the adult lesson study. So Hope Sabbath School has become my in-depth Bible class. Amen. Amen. I'm blessed each week by your discussions. May God continue to bless your ministry. Well, Jacqueline, thanks for writing to us from the Turks and Caicos Islands. Here's a note from a couple, a donor couple. And I want to thank those of you who support Hope Sabbath School. This is a donor-supported ministry. And this couple writes to us uh, from Missouri mm -hmm. in the United States and says, a day, We enjoy Hope Sabbath School. A day is coming when miles will not separate us. We can all be together worshiping the Lord our God. Amen. Amen. I hope this gift will bring another soul to Jesus mm -hmm. and a donation of $50 to help Amen. Hope Sabbath School. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much to each one for your support. Here's a note from Tanisha in Jamaica. I've always been watching Hope Sabbath School. In fact, for many years, I'm blessed as I study with my family and friends. I went to visit some in the U.S. in the summer, and I found out that my grand-aunt, I guess that's like my grandmother's sister, right, or grandfather's sister, at their church, they use the Hope Sabbath School outline for their Bible study. Wow. Amen. Well, I tell you, you can download the outline at hopetv.org slash hopess. I got a note from someone in Georgia just recently said, I listened to Hope Sabbath School and I took notes so I could teach. You can download the outline. It just takes a second. And that's what they were doing at this church. Please pray for me and my husband that we may remain faithful to God. Amen. Wow, what a prayer that is. Tanisha, thanks for writing to us from Kingston, Jamaica. One last note from Widron in Zambia. A lot of Hope Sabbath School members in Zambia. Hello, young adult men and women who come together to study the Word of God. Amen. I personally am helped and uplifted in my Christian life every time I watch Hope Sabbath School. Amen. Keep it up. Many people are really helped through this wonderful program. God bless you, Widron. Widron, thanks for writing. You've got a beautiful country there, and the Spirit of God is moving across Zambia in amazing ways. We're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. And to each one, we're glad you're with us. You can write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. Does it encourage us to get the emails? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we realize we're part of a global family, and we're glad you're part of that family, and we're part of that family too. 
Right now, we need your help to sing a song. It's the new scripture song for this series on how to under- interpret the Bible. And it's from Colossians 3:16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. You can download it from our website. Let's sing together. beautiful scripture Amen. let the word of Christ dwell literally in the Greek language to make a home mm. to make a home in you mm. we don't want the word to go in one ear and out the other. but to make a home in us Amen. so we're praying we invite you to join us as we pray today the Holy Spirit would guide the word of God the unique word of God to make a home in our hearts let's mm. pray father in heaven We are excited to see what you will do by your spirit as we study your word today. We pray for our Hope Sabbath School members around the world, for each one of us as we open your word, and we study about how to interpret the Bible. And today, how the Bible is a unique book, blessed by you. Guide us in our study, I pray, each Hope Sabbath School member around the world, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, I want to start by just asking a question about what makes the Bible unique. The Bible really isn't just the book. It's a library. Uh, Tell me something about the Bible that's unique over other books that we might find. Brittany. There's over 40 different authors from around the world. Okay, so the, just the variety of authors. Now, you could, you could have a, a, a compilation of like an editor with different contributors. So I suppose you could get that too, but, but that's certainly something, isn't it? That there's many authors from different cultures and even different, many different times, right, yeah. contributing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say like the time period that it was written over was like a vast time period. Right? Yeah. We, we, like we're saying maybe about 1,500 years, mm-hmm. something like that. Uh, so that's a, a vast amount of time. That, that makes a, a contemporary version impossible, right? You find 40 people, but you're not going to find them over 1,500 years writing on a common theme. Gary? And, and given the number of authors and the vast time period it's written over, they all have a, uh, a unity 
all the books have a unity. Mm -hmm. uh, they they complement one another. They don't contradict one another. So there's this sense that uh, either they're trying to collaborate or there's a power over mm -hmm. this process that, that really makes the Bible truly unique. And what's that, Jason? Well, also, too, to add what Gary was saying, the authors were different classes. You had kings, you had shepherds, That's you know, true. so it just kind of brought that unity together, definitely. Right. That some struggled for words and some used too many words, words. you know. <laughs> uh, Peter says, Peter was a fisherman, right? Yeah, right? And he says of the theologically trained Saul of Tarsus, later Paul, there's some things he writes that are difficult to understand. Right. So you're right, they were for different classes. Uh, different time periods, Evelyn? Uh, something also unique about the Bible is the number of manuscripts that we find specifically for the New Testament. I mean, mm -hmm. there's thousands of them, mm -hmm. which is unheard of with such an ancient text. And that's so important because people ask, how do we know that the Bible that Jesus referred to is the Bible we have today? Mm -hmm. And that addresses another issue of the work of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. not only speaking to the prophets, but preserving the text, mm -hmm. can you think of a, a, an amazing archaeological discovery that showed the preservation of the text? Gary? I was going to, the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls, right. Mm -hmm. That happened in which year? 1948. 1947 and 8, because they found more, didn't they? Yeah. And, uh, and what was startling about that discovery? Now, this was not New Testament. This was mm -hmm. Hebrew oh, scriptures, right? right. Mm -hmm. But what was startling about that discovery? Match up with the scriptures. That's right. The, the scriptures we have today and the scriptures, this is a thousand years before the earliest manuscripts we had, that the, the Bible Jesus quoted from, the one we have today. We can trust the Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. preserving the text. Yeah. Travis. Another special thing about the Bible, as well as written by humans, it found its origin in God. Mm. Mm. Some people think the Bible is human words about God, right. but the Bible testifies it's God's word to the human family. Mm -hmm. And we're going to discover that. So it's a unique book. What's also unique, we'll, we'll discover, is that the same Holy Spirit who spoke to the prophets and preserved the text wants to speak to us when we read the text Amen. Amen. and lead us into truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's something kind of, well, supernatural yeah. Amen. Yeah, about yeah. this book, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The greatest revelation of the Word of God, John speaks about in John chapter 1. I'd like to begin there in John chapter 1. We'll come back to some counsel from Moses, which I think relates to the whole Bible. But I'd like to begin in John, Brittany, if you have chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, the Word of God is more than just written. Let's hear what the text says. <clears throat> I'll be reading from the New King James Version, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So who is this word who was with God and was and is God who created all things? Could you read down? We don't have to guess, right? Mm -hmm. In verse 14 of the same John chapter 1. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full mm. of grace and truth. Shana, who's that talking about? Jesus. Jesus, right? Yeah. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, fully mm -hmm. God, fully man. Yes. Yes. And he is the fullest revelation of God. God's been speaking through the prophets, but Jesus, the fullest revelation. In fact, still in John chapter 5, verse uh, 39, Jesus makes a startling <coughs> claim. Alessa, if you could read for us John chapter 5 and verse 39. I am reading um, the New King James Version. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. Mm -hmm. Is it good to search the scriptures? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
But what's the purpose of studying the scriptures according to Jesus? Learn about Jesus. Jesus. To find him. Yeah. Yeah. The sad thing in the next verse, it says, but you refuse to come to me that you may find life. Yeah. So Jesus makes a radical claim that the scriptures all point to him. We'll study about that in a future study. But I want to go to also to John chapter 14 and verse 6. Travis, if you have that verse. You know, I love the Gospel of John. If we had to lose the other books in the library, I guess all of us have a favorite book. But to me, the Gospel of John is just so powerful. Uh, moved by the Holy Spirit, John the Apostle writes. What does he say in John 14? Actually, he quotes Jesus. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Mm-hmm. Now that is a, an unpopular truth. Some people say, oh, there's many ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Jesus said, I'm the only one. way. And they say, well, there's lots of different truths. And Jesus says, I'm the, I'm the truth. truth. Right. Well, you can find life, uh, and Jesus says, life, life. Very bold, but you know, someone said the truth is always exclusive. Mm. Yeah. If it's true, yeah. it excludes all error, mm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So as we're coming to study how to interpret the Bible, we want to keep in mind that it's all about a revelation of God, mm. most clearly seen in His Son. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Um, chapter 32, verses 45 to 47. And Rod, if you have that and you would read it for us, Moses, who wrote some books of the Bible, help me with that. What books did Moses write under the guidance of the Holy Spirit? The first five. five books. The first five. <laughs> Genesis, Exodus, Exodus, Exodus Leviticus, 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 Numbers. 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 And some Bible scholars, uh, Kenneth, believe you also wrote Job, Job. the book of Job. That's right. Maybe during the 40 years when he was in Midian, he heard the story and the Holy Spirit guided him because the book of Job is not just history, it's supernatural revelation about the great controversy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So Moses, who wrote under the guidance of the Spirit, many books, what does he say, Rod, in uh, chapter 32 of Deuteronomy, verse 45 to 47? And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to to observe to do, all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing you do, because it is your life. And through this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land, whether you go over Jordan to possess it. Could you summarize what Moses said in one sentence? If you listen to and obey the word of God, prolong your life. You're going to be blessed, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Now, I'm going to give you some time later to talk about how the word of God blessed your life. But I'm going to ask if there's someone who just would share. Yes, Shana, how did the word of God, how's the word of God blessed your life? Um, well, if we're referencing this verse, um, Moses told the people to tell it to their children. And I'm thinking of how my mom um, knew the word, studied the word, and lived the word so that I could see. And now that I'm on my own, I'm able to do the same thing. Is your mom still living? Yeah, she is. Do you think she might watch this program? She will. (laughs) (laughs) What a testimony that, that not only was mother's life blessed, but daughter's life was blessed because she... What did, it, what did Shana say? She not only studied it, and lived studied it, it but, but lived she, it. she lived it. That's right. So, hi, Mom, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're glad for godly mentors. Some of us didn't have parents who really taught us in the Word, but God led spiritual mothers, spiritual fathers, spiritual brothers, right? Am I right? Yes. 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 That blessed us. And so we're thankful for that. We'll have many opportunities at the end for you to share because this isn't just about, you know, techniques for interpreting the Bible. Do you know there are people that are specialists in interpreting the Bible who don't believe in God? Mm. Did you know that? Mm. They're they're atheistic theologians Mm -hmm. and they're experts in the languages and syntax and chiasms, Mm. but they don't hear the word Mm. in a life-changing way. So we're praying as we study that we will indeed hear God's word. Let's go on, talk about how the Bible was written, how God's truth was revealed. Harold, could you read for us from 2 Peter chapter 1, 
verses 19 to 21. Now, this is a verse that I found very helpful, but it may be the first time someone's hearing it. So, very important verse, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 to 21. How does your Bible read? All right. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Very clear um, description. Yeah. Now, some people have the idea that the Bible was all dictated, mm. right? Yeah. Slow down, God. <laughs> Is there any dictation in the Bible? No. Mm. Uh, some Stephanie, people. you're looking no, at me. Right? Were there times God spoke and they wrote right. down exactly yeah, what God know. said? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But then there's other times, like the Apostle Paul says, the, this, I will read it, the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and said, this is my body. And then it goes on and talks about not what Jesus is saying, but what Paul under the Holy Spirit is saying, right? Mm -hmm. So there are times when the actual words of God are recorded, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But uh, holy men of God spoke and wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. We call that inspiration, inspiration or inspired, right, inspired writing. So let's look at a couple of examples. Kim, could you take us back to Jeremiah? Jeremiah was young like you. In fact, he may have been younger than some of you. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. But his testimony helps us to understand how uh, revelation happened. Jeremiah 1, 1 to 6. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, one of the priests who were in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Joshua, Josiah, king of Judah, and until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the captivity of Jerusalem in the fifth month. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. Now while Kim was reading, the Holy Spirit said, Tell her to read verse 9 as well. But I'm going to just hold on, give you a moment to, to, to reflect on what we've read so far. What's amazing about these verses, Kim, uh, Brittany, that, that Kimberly just read? I mean, you just go, this is amazing. Yeah, I mean, our, our parents don't know us until they know that they're pregnant, but God knew us before we were even formed in the womb. He had a plan. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I appointed you. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah's human reaction is, mm -hmm. I can't do it. I do it. <laughs> this, is, this is not something that I can do. You want me to tell people things about you? How can I do that? And that's where the Holy Spirit impressed me, Kim, to read verse, that we read verse 9 as well. So Jeremiah 1 and verse 9. Okay. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. What do you think wow. about that? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus like, hallelujah. <laughs> that's supernatural. Yes. Yes. By the way, he's going to say some difficult things. He's going to be thrown in a pit. He's going to be struck because of some of the things he says, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the, the, there are false prophets. Right. But he's, the Lord has touched his mouth and put word. Word. heaven's words in his mouth. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing. Thank you for reading that. Uh, let's go over to Revelation chapter 1. We're hyperspacing uh, forward uh, about a half a millennium to uh, Revelation 1. Uh, Stephanie, could you read verses 9 through 11 for us? Sure. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos 
for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So he's on the, uh, in, in the um, prison island of Patmos, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, this is another book where it actually gives us the name of the author. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah is named. Uh, here, John is mentioned. But then, uh, where does it tell us about being in the Spirit? Mm -hmm. Verse 10. Verse 10. Verse 10. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? The Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit was active. Mm -hmm. right. And leading. If, if you, leading in this transcript. And leading. And, and if you read the rest of the book of Revelation, what is given to him? Vision. 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 Vision, right? Mm -hmm. uh, about things that are happening in the present or the future? The future. 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 Well, maybe the present too, because there were some things in the seven churches that were right. both present. right then, but also future. speaking mm -hmm. future. all the way to the end of time. Mm -hmm. So again, the Holy Spirit is at work revealing truth. Uh, you've got Jeremiah. You've got uh, John. Mm -hmm. um, Lots of other different authors. Let's talk about how different authors receive scripture. Give me some books of the Bible uh, written by eyewitnesses. The Gospels. Luke. Luke. Matthew. Luke, no. Matthew. Luke was oh, not there. John. 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 Matthew. Matthew. Okay. Matthew was one of the disciples, right? And it mentions actually in his book that he was called. Matthew 9, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 9. Get up. He leaves his tax collector's uh, booth, and he becomes a follower of Jesus, okay? Matthew was an eyewitness. Paul? Paul um, was not an eyewitness of the, of the ministry of Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, remember we quoted, he says, I received the Lord. Right. He wasn't in the upper room, but he tells us about what happened in the upper room. Mm -hmm. He was certainly an eyewitness of what God was doing in the early Christian church, right? Mm -hmm. And he wrote those things. Moses? Yeah. Moses, of yeah. course, was an eyewitness, right, as he recorded all the things that were happening. Shane? I think it's Joshua. Joshua was an eyewitness too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, many of the writers of the Bible, yeah. the minor prophets who spoke, spoke, rebuked all the corruption and apostasy, yeah. they saw it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they were eyewitnesses of the things that were happening and uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit uh, wrote them down. Uh, what, if, what prophets receive visions and dreams? Not all prophets yeah. Daniel. receive Daniel. visions Daniel. and dreams, Daniel. right? Daniel. Brittany? Ezekiel. Ezekiel uh, received prophet, uh, dreams. Yeah. The one member, the wheels and the wheels and the wheels and bones and all of those things, right? Yeah. Alessa? Daniel. Daniel, right. Great series we've had on Hope Sabbath School on, on the book of Daniel. Uh, Daniel is a great book because it, it tells a lot of story. Yeah. But it also has some amazing prophecies, right? Yes. Yeah. We're going to talk more about prophecy later in our study, all right? Isaiah. Anybody else have visions? Isaiah had visions. And Isaiah had visions, right? Yeah. Um, Paul had some revelations, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Peter. 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 Yeah. Peter had Peter. some revelations, yeah. too. That's right. right. You, you know, uh, there may be other... Uh, authors of the Bible that when we meet them will say, I had revelation too. <laughs> you know? uh, think, for example, John was an eyewitness, mm -hmm. yeah. but he's writing the, the account 50, 60 years after it happened when he's an old man. Mm -hmm. How does he remember all of those things with, with holy, well, I gave you the answer. <laughs> <laughs> with such precision. Holy Spirit. Could it be that, that he sees again under the revelation of God exactly yes. what happened? Mm -hmm. For example, the story only recorded in John where a woman is thrown at the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Jesus says to her, mm -hmm. I, neither do I condemn okay. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go, and Go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, he doesn't have to think, well, that's kind of what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit helped him with that. Are you with me? Yeah. That's yeah. exciting. All right, what about um, Holy Spirit guided investigation? Mm -hmm. yeah. Someone who wasn't there but was guided by the Holy Spirit. Luke. Mark. Luke. 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 Well, that's an interesting one, Jason, because Mark was not one of the 12, was he? All right. And many Bible scholars believe that, that Mark gets most of his content from the Apostle Peter, Peter. Yeah. from Peter. 
Uh, though Paul also says he was very helpful to me, uh, John Mark, that is, is, John Mark. Um, but of course, the Holy Spirit's guiding even in Peter's recollection. Mm -hmm. and in, yeah. But there's another one who wasn't there that was really important. Evelyn? Uh, Luke. Luke, doctor. Dr. Luke. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Luke appears in, in which book? He's not named in the third gospel. Luke Acts. Acts. The book of Acts, that's yeah, right. Yeah. He's there all the time, a traveling physician mm -hmm. with the Apostle Paul. And so he says, when he received the vision, we got up and went. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously not Paul writing the book of Acts. Uh, Luke is identified as the one traveling with him. And the clue that shows us he wrote the book of Luke, which we call it by his name, mm -hmm. is not just that in early manuscripts it says according to Luke, mm -hmm. but he wrote both Acts and the gospel to... Theophilus. Theophilus. Yeah. A man named Theophilus. We have no idea who he was. Could have been in med school with him, you know. <laughs> no idea. But he, he loved his brother and wanted him to know the truth about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Beautiful, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's look. Just let's take a moment and look at Luke chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, because I think it's important to realize different ways that the Holy Spirit revealed. Gary, if you could find that for us, Luke chapter 1, 1 to 4. We've talked about um, eyewitness accounts. We've yeah. talked about visions and dreams. Let's see what Luke tells us. Okay, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Luke 1, verses 1 to 4. Inasmuch as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write to you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. So when I first read that, I thought it was a little bit haughty or arrogant, you know. I'm writing a perfect account. <laughs> but if we understand that no prophecy, which is not only telling the future, but, pro but f telling forth the yeah. truth, yes. yeah. was by the Holy Spirit of God. What's Luke saying? Mm -hmm. the, Holy Spirit Spirit Spirit. the Holy Spirit is impressed. The Holy Spirit is the one that has enabled me yes. mm -hmm. to do my research, research yeah. and come up with a perfectly reliable account mm -hmm. yeah. of what happened at a time that I was not present. Mm -hmm. And where did he get it? Not visions and dreams that we know of, but I I speaking. Yes. Maybe he spoke to the, the, to the blind man, you know, mm -hmm. Bartimaeus. Maybe he yeah. spoke to Zacchaeus. Maybe he spoke to Mary, the mother of Jesus. We don't know all the people, but he was looking, right? Yeah. Yeah. Were you there? Can I talk to you? <laughs> and, and the beautiful thing is, did not the Holy Spirit also help the person who was sharing with mm -hmm. Luke yeah. wow. to give an accurate account? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So amazing. So here's a question. <laughs> Why didn't God just beam down the book? <laughs> Why does he speak at different times and in different ways? Let's look in Hebrews chapter 1, <laughs> verses 1 and 2. Jason, if you could read Hebrews oh, yeah. chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Because uh, here, the author of Hebrews tells us that it wasn't just one way that God revealed mm -hmm. His uh, will and His word. Oh, amen. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in the time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by His Son, who he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. So uh, the whole book of Hebrews is about, if you think what happened through the prophets was good, Jesus is better. better. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the book is about. Mm -hmm. But it says in Mary, many different ways at different times. Why different ways, different times? What do you think, Travis? I think because it's cultures, and Jesus had a way of reaching people where they were. Mm -hmm. um, I remember the woman at the well, he told her about living water, and the fisherman, he was going to make fishers of men. It's like Jesus knows how to reach people. So you'd say God wanting to reveal truth at different times, and he's going to come in that 
cultural context, help them to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe yeah. the stories will be different, the illustrations different. Mm -hmm. Shana? Yeah, and like as a teacher, you know that each student learns differently. Mm -hmm. Everyone grasps concepts mm -hmm. differently. Some may do it visually, some audibly, mm -hmm. some through dreams. So like it's mm -hmm. God being purposeful to like reach people, as mm -hmm. he said, where they were. Kenneth, do you want to add to that? Yeah, and also um, because of the way humans are living their lives, when God was reaching out to them, they find themselves in different places, different circumstances, and they all reflect how we live. And I think how God um, reached out to them with his word also helped us for the rest of the world because the word of God comes to us at different circumstances, just like he sure. came to those people. Mm -hmm. What does it tell us about God? He's mindful. Mm -hmm. Huh? He's mindful of us. Oh, he's mindful of us. Okay, he's... he's uh, he wants to get through to us, Gary. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, he knows when he needs to speak something mm. to us. He's personal. He, yeah, he's personal. a personal yeah. guy. Yeah. You know, it's with Elijah, it wasn't with the whirlwind and with the <laughs> fire. It was through <laughs> still, still, still small, small voice. voice. But on Mount Sinai, there was <laughs> a whole lot of fire yeah. And, yeah. and thunder. and Trumpet sound. God yeah. knows. Yeah. Uh, but he's not trying to scare people. He's trying to connect with us, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Why do you think there's so much history in the Bible. There's a lot of history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not just a collection of visions, right? Why do you think there's so much history? Let's look in Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Jane, if you could read Romans 15 and verse 4. This is uh, the Apostle Paul writing to Christians in Rome, but also <laughs> to all of us by the Holy Spirit. And it, he gives us an inspired perspective. And... Romans 15, verse 4, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Mm. That's true for the whole Bible, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's written for our learning. learning, not just so we could be smart, but so that we could have hope. 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 That's right, because it's all supposed to point us to Jesus, Jesus. the Savior of the world our savior right yeah. so but history is part of that yeah. yes. why so much history gary someone once said that experience is the best teacher but you don't have to go through experience to learn it mm. and when you look mm. at the various characters the peoples in the bible going through things you can say oh i that resonates with my situation mm -hmm. or oh i know i shouldn't go down this path mm -hmm. because this could happen mm. so it's like stories that teach you how to live the way Christ wants you to live. Beautiful. So if I read a story, uh, it, it or gets tweeted to me or I read it on a news uh, note that says, uh, pedestrian texting walks out into the road and is hit by a car. Mm. You don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to do that, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. Don't don't text while you're walking okay. yeah. along the road. Yeah. Uh, so these stories, even the history, why? There's another reason I think besides um, learning from their example. Why so much history? Anybody? Yes, Brittany. I think so that we can look at people who lived, and we have the names of them in the scriptures, and then we can look at history books that are secular, and we can say, wow, we can trust this Bible, mm -hmm. because even secular historians are recording the same people in the same places and the same events. So that gives credibility to the, the scriptures. And, you know, mm -hmm. biblical archaeologists are constantly finding things that verify mm -hmm. what, what liberal critics say never existed, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. confirming. So history is there to say this is not just some myth from the past, right, yeah. Stephanie? Well, I was thinking of Elijah and his story mm. and how he, his path, how God took him. Mm. And when we're on our path, we don't always see the end. But when you can read someone's the beginning to the end, mm -hmm. you can say, you know, God is involved and he mm. will get me just like he did that for Elijah. He will take me to the next step. Is that good news? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Get excited? Yes. <laughs> Someone has said that about 30% um, of the Bible is prophecy. Mm. Now, a person that hasn't begun to look at the Bible, go, you mean prophecy. By that you mean because there's foretelling or telling forth, yeah. which is mm. just proclamation. But there's also speaking about things yet to come. When it says 30%, it's saying about things yet to come. That's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the... 
the person who's not ever studied the Bible says, yeah. how is that possible that 30% of the Bible can be speaking about things that have not yet happened? Mm. Well, obviously, people could guess, right? I'm yeah. sure people pay money for yeah. people to guess about what's going to happen. But the Bible gives a bold claim. In fact, the Lord himself, I want us to read it in the prophet Isaiah, chapter 46. Prophet Isaiah, Evelyn, if you could read, if you can find Isaiah the prophet, chapter 46, and verses 9 and 10. In fact, there's quite a bit in this middle part of, of Isaiah's book. Isaiah is called the gospel prophet, by the mm -hmm. way, because he speaks so much prophetically about the Messiah who will come. But here he records the word of the Lord. So, Stephanie, this is one of those examples where God says something and the prophet writes it down, right? Mm -hmm. What do you read in verses 9 and 10 of chapter 46? I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Amen. That sounds fairly decisive, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm God, you're not. <laughs> there's no God like me. Ultimately, there's no other true God, is there? Mm -hmm. They're all false gods. Yes. But, but what is it that sets God apart? Mm -hmm. he, knows he knows the, the end Well, a lot of things. He's omnipotent, yep. right? Yes. Yeah. He's omnipresent, yeah. but he's also no, omniscient. He knows all things, even things that are yet to come. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what's exciting. Can someone find the book of Amos? It's just a tiny little book. Amos by the way, Jason, you talked about different occupations. Amos was a shepherd. Oh, yes. Okay? He was not, not a courtier in, in some <laughs> royal court. Anybody find Amos? Rod, you have it? Chapter 3 of Amos, uh, verse 7. This God, who knows the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that have not yet come to pass, what does uh, Amos the prophet tell us? I'll be reading from the King James Version. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Wow. So Moses said, you're blessed if you read this book and tell it to your children, because it not only tells us how to live, especially by looking at the life of Jesus, yeah. but it tells us what's going to happen. What's going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's amazing. It tells us what's going to happen. Many prophecies, but I'd like us just in our study today to focus on some of the prophecies that point to the Messiah coming. All right, mm -hmm. Travis? I'd just like to point out that Amos 3.7 is really a beautiful verse because when you see the beauty of God in this verse because he's saying, he's talking about things that are going to happen. God is not going to leave us in the dark about things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's not going to bring the end of the world or some catastrophic thing upon the world without warning us because he's a God of love right mm -hmm. right and that's right that's why he wants to communicate right. otherwise he could just be silent mm -hmm. yeah. but he's a God who speaks and right. spoke most clearly through the word mm -hmm. who became flesh yeah. Jesus right so we're going to look at a few prophecies some have estimated at least 65 mm -hmm. some may say I found 66 or 70 but there's lots of prophecies written hundreds of years before Messiah came uh, let's look at a few of them together. Genesis chapter 49, verses 8 through 10. Genesis 49. I'm looking, Shana, it looks like you have it there. Mm -hmm. Verses 8 through 10. Who's, who's writing the book of beginnings under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? Moses. Moses, right? What does uh, Moses record? It's not his words, right? But let's see, uh, he's recording a, a narrative here. And I'm reading from the King James Version. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, 
and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Hmm. Whose words is Moses recording here? Um, Jacob. Jacob. Jacob, that's right. Thank yeah. you, uh, Harold. Jacob is blessing his sons, and he comes to Judah, who's not the oldest and certainly not the most perfect, yeah. mm -hmm. but he prophesies by the Holy Spirit that Messiah, Messiah yeah. will come from the line of Judah. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right? Let's go to Psalm 22. The Psalms were written by a number of different individuals, uh, but most of them were written by David. by David, the psalmist David. Kim, if you have Psalm 22, 12 through 18, and as Kim is reading, I'd like you to listen and hear things written a thousand years before Messiah came that were fulfilled in every detail. So listen carefully as you read verses 12 to 18. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evil doers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and glot over me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. Mm. I mean, it's like you just read the gospel yep. yeah. account of the crucifixion of, of Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. What were some things that jumped out at you? Anybody? Divided, yes, Alessa. Um, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing, they cast lots. <laughs> you can read what the Roman soldiers did, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, Pierce my hands. Pierce my, my hands, hands and my feet, feet. Yeah. which was not the standard form of crucifixion. Sometimes they would nail, but normally they tied them, right? Jesus was probably tied and nailed for mm -hmm. inflicting extra pain. Yeah. What else did you hear, uh, Evelyn? It says, my strength is dried up like a potsherd, and Jesus was weak, mm. just completely distraught. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm. Yes, Harold? Well, it says here that the congregation of the wicked has enclosed me, so they encompassed him. Mm. And yes, he was amongst people who cried out, crucify him. Mm. Even uh, when he was at the high priest's house, they were like all trying to find a, a fault. Mm -hmm. There's so many more things we could share. Yeah. Right, Shana, one last one. Um, it says, I am poured out like water. It talked about how he was sweating like great drops of mm. blood. Mm. So you see this intense agony. I've got a hyperspace forward a few hundred years to the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53, mm. verses 3 to 7. Oh, there's so much more that we could learn. I'm going to make this the last uh, prophecy about Jesus because I want to give some prophecies by Jesus uh, still in the time that's uh, available for us. So who has Isaiah 53? Brittany, could you read verses 3 through 7 for us? I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 7. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Mm -hmm. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Mm. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Mm. Someone told me one time, Jesus cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So that we would never have to make that cry. Mm. Mm. 700 years before it happened, the Holy Spirit revealed to Isaiah the prophet how Messiah would suffer. 
That was not what the Jews expected, by the way, was it? They expected what? The king. Yeah, a conquering king, right? But Jesus fulfills every prophecy in every detail. But we've got to move on and look at some prophecies of Jesus. Let's go to Luke chapter 9, verses 21 and 22. So many more prophecies in the Hebrew scriptures about him. But uh, who has Luke chapter 9? Travis, you have it. We'll read verses 21 and 22. We're just going to look at three prophecies of Jesus and then comment on them all together. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And he strictly warned and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. No way the disciples expected that, right? <laughs> Maybe rejected because there was a lot of hostility. Killed, couldn't even imagine that thought. Rise from the dead, prophecy of Jesus. Let's look at another one, Matthew 24, verses 1 and 2. By the way, some people say, well, if Jesus already prophesied he was going to rise from the dead, it wasn't a big deal for him to die. But it was only by faith that he prophesied under the Spirit's uh, guidance, right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Matthew 24, Gary, verses yeah. 1 and 2. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Both of those prophecies fulfilled in every detail. That one fulfilled 40 years later. Yep. Yeah. Destruction of Jerusalem, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's one more prophecy, though, not yet fulfilled, but it will be. Kim, if you could find John 14, verses 1 to 3. I love this prophecy. Mm -hmm. um, I had someone tell me, well, obviously Jesus didn't mean what he said there. Yeah. But you know what? He did mean what he said. <laughs> yeah. And this prophecy will also be fulfilled. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I will go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Beautiful Amen. promise about the second, 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 second coming, coming, the glorious return of Jesus which just as the other prophecies have all been fulfilled about Messiah, so will that one be fulfilled. But I want to close by talking, one of the unique aspects of the Bible is how lives are transformed when they read the Bible. I just want to read about a young boy king in 2 Kings chapter 22, just verses 10 and 11. It, it resulted in one of the greatest reformations recorded in the Hebrew Scriptures. 2 Kings Chapter 22, verses 10 and 11. Who has that one? We'll read it for us. Got a volunteer? Yeah. Kenneth, thank you. Yeah. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, Then Satan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hekiah the priest has given me a book. And Satan read it before the king. Now it happened when the king heard the word of the book of the law that he tore his clothes. This book of the law, which, by the way, uh, at that time, at the time of Josiah, would have been the, third Torah. Book. the Torah, the Pentateuch, right? Yeah. He reads it and he realizes how terribly out of harmony with the Word of God and the will of God the people of God are, and he tears his garments. You know, he's like grieving. Now, if you read the rest of the story, you know, you've got two choices. Like Judas, you could go out and yourself. hang yourself. Or you can repent. You could repent. Yeah. Which, what does Josiah do? Repent. He, he repents. He not only repents, but he leads a great reformation, yeah. which involves... Restoration of true worship. Restoration of true worship. So get all of the idols out of the mm -hmm. temple, tear down the high places, the sacred groves where they worship fertility goddesses, get rid of all of those things, come back, uh, celebrate Passover. It's an incredible... Mm -hmm. uh, transformation that occurs. Mm -hmm. But that was uh, more than 2,000 years ago. Let's close by talking about today. How has the Word of God blessed your life? Give me a Bible text that's been a blessing to you. 
and how God has impacted your life. Rod. Um, I'd like to uh, mention 2 Corinthians um, chapter 12 and verse 8 and 9. Okay, let's give us a moment to find it. Why is this such a, a powerful, been a powerful verse for you? So I, I put off um, baptism for so long, and you know I wish I hadn't. And I did so because I thought that I needed to become perfect of mm -hmm. my own, mm -hmm. on my own. And, and I was mm -hmm. cognizant of my inability to keep, um, you know, the Ten Commandments, and really in, in any of God's law. And I, and I just kept falling, and, and, and I wasn't doing things right. I, I just didn't do what I wanted to do. And I felt like I was never going to be worthy enough, and so I didn't get baptized until, you know, I read this text. And this Tell is, us the reference again, Second Corinthians. This is Second Corinthians uh, chapter 12. Chapter 12. Verses 8 and 9. And verses 8 and 9. And this is the Apostle Paul writing to the believers in Corinth. What does it say? And it says, and this is the King James Version, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I think later he says, For when I'm weak, then I'm and strong. strong. And I'm strong because strength. I found my strength in God, right? Amen. So God's Holy Spirit spoke to you in that verse? It did, because instead of me um, thinking that God wasn't with me because I was falling um, continually, I realized, no, His grace is sufficient. He is with me. If I do feel weak, that's, this, it's not a good thing, but the Lord is with me to strengthen me. You know what I mean? And that's the powerful thing about the Word of God. Amen. I'm getting yeah. excited <laughs> because that ancient word, that's 2,000 years ago that was written, became the Word of God today Amen. to Rod, well, a few years ago, became the Word of God to him. And God is doing that across the world. Maybe in your own heart you have a witness. I'd love to hear from you. S write to us at sshope at hopetv.org how God took a word, ancient inspired scripture, and transformed your life. And stay with us for this series on how to interpret the Bible. It's going to be a life-changing journey. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, it is so exciting to hear testimony of how your word became a living word, a life-transforming word. As we study this unique book, May the Holy Spirit work in supernatural ways, not only to bless us, but others too. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. It's going to be an amazing series on how to interpret the Bible, not just so you can be Bible smart, but so your life can be transformed and then go out and be a blessing to those around you.